What's up, guys? Um, first, I want to thank Steve um, for having me on his channel. Uh, that was awesome. I appreciate that. We got off to a bit of a rocky start. Uh, Steve is a uh, class act uh, and an awesome dude. So thanks, Steve, for having me on your channel. I appreciate it. Um, so Steve and I talked about the, the feet up bench press, which again, in my video, um, I will continue to refer to as the Larson press, uh, as the Larson press is the legs hanging over the edge of the bench, uh, variant, if you will, popularized by Adrian Larson. That's what I do. Uh, that's what I'll be referring to it in this video. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, um, link below, I made a playlist of. Other videos of me talking about Larson Press and some of my better Larson Presses. Um, I've Larson Pressed five plates numerous times. I've done it close grip. I've done it with a five second pause uh, five plate Larson Press. Um, if you Google image Larson Press, um, I think like two of my videos are the top two searches. So that's kind of cool. Um, but anyway, so I, I've, I've probably done more Larson pressing on camera on video than anybody on YouTube. I feel pretty confident in saying that. Uh, so let's talk about like why I do Larson press so much. Um, not like so much weight, but why so much, um, uh, I frequently use it, um, as a main movement. And, um, I got into it. Uh, we touched on it a little bit with Steve, uh, it just time flies when you're having fun and I felt like there was so much we couldn't get to. Um, so, um, I mentioned on there the, the, probably the biggest reason as a more advanced lifter, uh, that I go to the Larson presses so much is the fatigue it saves. Um, when, you know, I've squatted 775 in wraps, I've deadlifted 700 plus, um, 700 even in a meet, 700 plus in the gym. Uh, you know, I've benched 550, uh, I front squatted 550, I strict overhead pressed 335, uh, and very strict by the way, um, I pride myself on that. That said, you get to these big lifts and fatigue management becomes very important and especially lower back fatigue. I've injured my lower back a couple times, um, and you know, some of it early on, there were some bad form issues. Um, but fatigue can certainly play a, a big role in that. Uh, I arch really hard in my bench press. I don't get the big McDonald's arch like some of the, the smaller competitors do. Uh, however, I get really extremely tight. Um, I force myself into position uh, with the uprights. I put my hands behind my back and push the uprights um, and force myself into an arch. Um uh, so I, I don't have that great thoracic mobility, but I still, you know, I get extremely tight with my arch. Um, and it's very fatiguing on my lower back. So I, I really don't like to train like that year round. Um, generally, I don't use competition bench press for training purposes unless I'm getting ready for a meet. Um, right now I'm getting ready for a bench only meet. So I've been benching with my feet on the ground. Uh, and I started... 10 weeks out, I started this meat prep and that was the first time I benched with my feet on the ground in months because I'd been doing Larson presses, uh, for so long before that. Uh, and I still get an arch with my Larson press. Uh, that's what I like about it. I can't get quite the exaggerated arch that I do with my feet on the ground. And I'm obviously not nearly as tight because my feet aren't on the ground, but with a smaller arch and tight glutes, uh, insert joke here. Um, basically the upper half of my body is the same and it, it mirrors my bench press almost identically other than, you know, there's probably some added range of motion because my arch isn't quite as big, which, which is also beneficial in the long run. Uh, so it, it, it saves a lot of fatigue on my lower back so I can do more volume. Um, I can get more work in, with less fatigue on my lower back and it saves, you know, that for squats and deadlifts, which can also be fatiguing, you know, on my lower back. A lot of, a lot of every compound lift can, you know, be fatiguing on your lower back. So it, it really helps a bunch, um, 
in managing, you know, said fatigue. Um, and upper body stuff, bench presses, overhead presses, uh, you really should be able to do a lot of volume with, even more so probably than with your squats and deadlifts. Um, I'm a big fan of volume uh, with the presses. I know Steve is as well. Um, and by doing Larson presses, you know, it allows me to get that much more volume with almost identical form, you know, from the waist up. Uh, so I'm, I'm not really losing my motor patterns either um, in regards to my bench press uh, while still saving the fatigue for the other lifts. Uh, so that, that's probably my main purpose for it at this point uh, and where I am with lifting. Um, I know if you're brand new here, it's a lot of bench and OHP videos lately. Uh, I have a coming off a torn meniscus, so I've just been focusing on upper body stuff. But I, I promise uh, if you dig back deep enough, uh, there's other lifts as well. Um, but yeah, so that, that's hands down my top reason at this point for using it as fatigue management. Um, probably the second reason I like doing them so much is, is kind of that old school mentality of if you just make something harder um, and you can do a harder version of it, when you go back to the normal version of it, it'll be easier. Um, akin to like a deficit deadlift. You know, if, if you get to where you can do a 600 pound deficit deadlift um you know you should be able to pull more than that with your normal deadlift just by factor of getting that 600 pound deficit and you should now be able to pull you know insert number over 600 here uh off the floor if, with your traditional deadlift um and i kind of feel a lot like that with larson press like you know if, if you if you end your last training cycle and you bench press 405 pounds. You hit that four plate goal. Um, in your next training cycle, you say, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to do Larson presses this training cycle. And you get to Larson pressing, say you get up to 410 pound Larson press. Well, you should be able to put your feet on the ground now and bench more than 410 just because your Larson press is at 410. You put your feet on the ground and you automatically get an instant boost. Now, to make the most out of it, it's going to take you, you know, more than your first try with your feet on the ground to get back efficient with your bench press. It shouldn't take too long. If you're benching four plates plus, you know, you're a pretty efficient bench presser at that point. The learning curve is not going to be as steep, but it still take you a couple weeks to get back in the groove of, you know, your traditional bench press. However, you've already eclipsed your old bench press anyway, uh, just by proxy of your Larson press eclipsing it. And now, as you get efficient... You know, you you Larson pressed 410, you put your feet on the ground and you bench 425 the first try. Uh, you know, three weeks later, maybe you're benching 440. Uh, again, just by virtue of that Larson press, you know, getting over your old bench press. And I think that's something, I don't know that it's really quantifiable uh, so much, uh, you know, doing something harder to in turn make the normal thing feel easier. Um, but mentally it works for me, you know, just little league baseball, putting the donut on your bat, swinging it a couple times, making it feel heavy, uh, and then taking the donut off. And now in your mind, you know, your 28 ounce bat feels like, you know, a feather because you had that donut on it that made it 52 ounces. Um, so I feel a lot, a lot of that with the Larson press, uh, you know, in that sort of sense. Um, and now, you know, the more sciencey stuff, uh, who was, I think Jeff Nipper did a video, um, with some, uh, EEG, EMG, uh, shit, whatever they call it these days, um, <coughs> results and it showed more, more muscle activity, um, in the prime movers, with uh the feet up versus the feet down uh and you know that's great i i think there's also something to that you know isolating your upper body uh certainly get more pec activation because you're not using your legs to drive it off of you at all um probably help with some shoulder development uh 
I always go back to it still. It makes it harder, and that's what I like about it. But, you know, there's there's certainly uh, probably something to it from a bodybuilding standpoint as well. I think that's who the, the movement's typically been most popular with throughout the years anyway is, is the bodybuilders. Um, but, you know, they were onto something. Uh, you know, a lot of them use it submaximally uh, to get more volume in. Um, you know, I have a pretty big chest myself. And, uh, again, a high volume Larson presses. Uh, so there, there's definitely something to that there. I will let you book nerds, uh, go deeper into that. I, I say that tongue in cheek. Uh, I, I, you know, read books myself contrary to what I look like. Uh, but I, I don't dig too deep into like the ultra sciencey data part of things. Um, I try to figure out what works, what I can apply to myself and help apply to others, um, and then use that. So gosh, this segment's kind of been rambly. Uh, but yeah, certainly pseudo isolating, I guess, not like single arm isolations or anything, but you're isolating your upper body. Uh, and you know, there's probably going to be some use for it there. Uh, now, in terms of, I've, I've heard it be argued um, from some sources I won't name, uh, and I've, I've heard it, you know, be argued from reputable sources too about uh, you're going to miss out on overload. Uh, you won't be able to load as much weight as you can, uh, you know, with your traditional bench press, and that's going to be true. You're not going to be able to Larson press as much as you bench press. However. The drop-off is not going to be as significant as you think it is. Um, I know in the Jeff Nippert video, they mentioned uh, that they were comparing a non-arched bench press uh, to the, you know, feet-up bench press, which, uh, excuse me, um, their feet-up bench press was, you know, kind of like in a crunch position variant, whereas mine is the Larson press. So... You know, they compared, like, no leg drive, feet on the ground bench press to feet up bench press. I'm comparing a leg drive arch bench press to a Larson press with no leg drive, but still a little bit of an arch. Um, so it's kind of similar in that regard. Um, and, and with the same thing, Greg Knuckles said he really didn't see a big difference, if any difference. Uh, I'd have to go back and look. Uh, between his non-arch bench and his feet up bench. Um, while I do see difference between my completely arched competition setup and my, you know, slightly arched Larson press setup, it's not a whole lot. My, my best bench press in the gym, uh, you know, in my competition setup is 550 pounds. My best Larson press is 505 pounds. Both of them moved very well. There may have been, you know, five or ten pounds left over on each one. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're talking about a 45-pound difference right at 10% um, at, a, at a maximal one rep max level. Um, in terms of volume, I don't think that I really have any direct comparisons. I've done 405 as a 5x5 five five with a Larson Press. I think that's in the... The playlist I put down below, um, I've done 455 on bench press as a 5x5. Five five. Um, but it, it, it's something where if you're working it in a wave of training or something like that, uh, yes, for that time, the, the amount of weight that you're going to be able to load is going to be a little lower, but it, uh, it's a variation, you know. Your front squat's going to be lower loaded than your back squat, but it still serves a purpose, you know, in training. Your SSB, if you have one of those, is going to be lower than your low bar squat, but it serves a purpose too. Um, so I don't, I don't think anybody's advocating for like the full replacement of bench press with Larson press, uh, but I replace it oftentimes completely, um, and I've had great success with it. Um, it's, you know... One of those things where sometimes, you know, you can get paralysis by analysis and look too deep into some of the scientific principles um, and, and isolate a specific scientific principle while disregarding some other ones. Um, so I, I really, 
I don't buy into that a whole lot unless you were arguing for like completely completely replacing bench press, which I've yet to see anybody suggest, you know, completely replacing bench press in its totality with a Larson feet up bench press. Uh, so I, I really don't see that as much of a negative. Um, now, you know, we're 15 minutes in. If you're still here, uh, bless you. Um, how to apply this, uh, you know, you can do this a few ways. Uh, me personally, like I said, I will, I do replace my bench press in, in the off season, uh, or bodybuilding blocks, however you want to call, like not getting ready for a meet specifically. Um, I will oftentimes completely replace bench press with Larson press and you know, you can treat your Larson press like your bench press with variations as well. If you wanted to do Spoto Larson presses, if you want to do close grip Larson presses, which I highly recommend, pause Larson presses, touch and go Larson presses. Um, you can do speed work with Larson presses, et cetera, et cetera. Um, pretty much any variation you can do with bench, you can do with Larson press. Uh, so, uh, you, you can run it as such. Your primary movement is going to be the Larson press, program it as you would program your bench press. Now, using it as an accessory to bench press, I I wouldn't use it on the same day unless you're somebody who does your primary bench work and then you do a bench variation on the same day. So say you do uh, you know, a 3 by 3 or a 3 by 5 with bench press and then after that you do close grip bench presses. You could sub in close grip Larson presses there. Um, that would be fine and suitable. Um, I typically, uh, if, if I'm going to run it like that and use a variation, I will give it its own day. So like in my off season, I'll have my main bitch day, which I'll do Larson presses. Um, you know, could be pause Larson presses, could be touch and go Larson presses. Depends what my goals are for the time being. Um, but I will do Larson presses on my main day. Then I'll take a second day in the week, um, and if I want to do close grip Larson presses, I will give it its own day. Um, and what I like to do, typically anything I'm doing, uh, I, I like to, if, if I'm not suffering fuck around itis, which we all do from time to time, and I think it's a great thing to break the monotony. Um, but if I'm being like real deal serious about my training for the time, uh, I run like a block linear periodization. So I will, I will go from five by tens to five by fives to three by fives to three by threes after three by threes, either reset or, you know, peak for a one rep max. Um, on my variation day, I will typically do something like a five by five, um, with an AMRAP on the last set to technical failure, not absolute failure. Um, and add five pounds a week. Uh, and then when I get to where I am RPE nine and a half, 10 on the fifth set or on the fifth rep of the fifth set, um, I will reset the variation. So if it's like close grip Larson presses, maybe I'll go to close grip Spoto press, um, something like that. Now for you guys, like if you're running your bench press on its day and you want to give just the traditional Larson press its day as an accessory, um, that's something I'd recommend. I'd recommend doing a bench press with whatever your regular programming is. Uh, then on your secondary, your Larson press day, um, you know, do like a five by five. If you want to throw AMRAPs in there, go for it. Start low at, you know, 65%, add five pounds a week. When you get to RPE 10, you can't add any more weight. Um, on your fifth rep, fifth set, change your variation. You know, you could go from regular arson press to close grip arson press or something like that. Um, or you could reset at that point. If you just want to keep doing Larson press, get your fifth set, fifth rep. You've, that's all you got. Go back down. Say you started at 275, uh, last time and you worked your way up to, 325 uh, on your 5x5s five five for Larson Press, and that's all you had in you. Uh, go back down and start at 285 this time. You know, add 10 pounds to it, um, and then add 5 pounds a week progressively 
Um, and, you know, this time where last time you stalled at 325, I'm not going to guarantee it, but you'll probably get past 325 this time, um, you know, and run it that way. Uh, that's typically the way I, I like to set up a, uh, like a primary and then a secondary type day. And that's how I like to do with, you know, other lifts as well. Of course, these days I don't squat or deadlift twice a week or do a variation as such. So, um, it's not really going to apply to them so much. Like if I want to do a wave of front squats, like front squats are my squats. Uh, and that is what it is. But you, you'll even... Benching 550, I'm pretty advanced <laughs> at this point with my bench press. Um, and I, I can still do two days of, you know, pretty good volume with pretty good weight. Um, and it doesn't hamper me too much. Uh, can't get away with squats and deadlifts like that anymore. Um, so, yeah, that, that's but that's basically how I would apply the Larson presses. Uh, like I said, you, you can use it as an accessory the day of your main bench press. You can completely replace your bench press for a temporary time, not forever. Um, or you can give Larson Press its own, you know, day in conjunction with your bench press if you're somebody who benches uh, multiple times a week. Um, so that's that. Uh, if you have any other questions about Larson Presses, uh, leave them below. I'll try to answer them to the best of my abilities. Uh, feel free to check out uh, any of the videos in the playlist I linked below. Um, I, I enjoy Larson presses. I enjoy speaking about Larson presses. It is by far and away, uh, my favorite variation, uh, of the lifts. It might be my favorite lift in general at this point. Um, but yeah, I've talked long enough. Most of you probably didn't make it this far anyway. Uh, thanks again, Steve, for having me. I appreciate it. Um, if you enjoy lifting content, uh, lifting related content, I'm not really flashy, uh, but I like to lift heavy weights and I talk about it sometimes. So subscribe if you're into that sort of thing um, and or you have a fat hairy dude fetish, you guys are welcome here too. <laughs>